So here today, talk about your, your book that you've uh, launched. How was it sitting down and reflecting on what was quite a long career for you? Long. I think long has been the, the word. Um, you know, it was great. I said it's quite therapeutic when you go back through it. When you break it down and you, and you see it for what it is, um, the journey, um, yeah, it's quite refreshing. I think sometimes it, we get you're already in it and people tell you about your journey and well done, you've done this and you've done that. I think when you do it yourself and you actually look back and you realise certain things that you've done, um, it's quite phenomenal to read. I think that was, I was what I was going to ask you because to live through it is one thing, but then to sit down and reflect on it is, is another, isn't it? How different was that compared to sort of living it? Did you appreciate perhaps a bit more what you'd achieved? I think, I think you look from where certain stuff, um, from where I was to where I ended up being, I think that's where you got to, you put a big smile on your face. Um, the great thing I, I enjoyed doing was the smiles I got from the journey all the way up. Um, that, that's what I quite enjoyed, the little silly things where people just wouldn't know and, and you stick the little nuggets in there that no one ever knew that even happened and I talked in little bits about Sheffield Wednesday and different bits like that. Um, no one knows them stories. So it's great when people read, did, did he, uh, I think they'll get a few times when people go, did he actually do that? Did he do that or did he just add it in for the book? But I, it's actually done. And, and your story is, is quite unconventional in a sense because you're, you're one of these strikers who worked their way up pretty much from the bottom uh, right up to the Premier League and, and that journey isn't so familiar perhaps anymore. No, I don't think so. I think it's different now. I think the difference now is uh, players get healthy a lot longer. Um, we talked about the other day when I was 18, um, if you weren't a professional at that time, that was it. You were, you were gone. You went non-league. There wasn't the 23s or you were there till 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. They don't happen. Um, now it does and I think that's a difference I think that's why you won't see as many um, coming through from the non-leagues I think you're kind of a lot more won't, won't drop through the net and I think that's where we're different but clubs couldn't hold it we couldn't afford to hold them back in the day you had a group of 20 players and them 20 players needed to play But and I'm, and I'm grateful for that I'm grateful because it moulded me as a player and moulded me as a person and perhaps what people aren't aware of the fact you did go abroad to Singapore and Australia and try and make your trade out there yeah that's it um, I've got some good life skills off it the great thing about going to Singapore, and I said say in the book, is I had four months of playing football in extreme heat. Um, I was fit as a fiddle. So when I came back to England and actually bounced into Barrow, um, even though I, was, I started working then, I was still so fit because I'd just been running around for four, four months. So it was great. Um, and I think there's no coincidence in me doing that to come back to then launch from Barrow straight to Sheffield Wednesday. It was the key to everything. And uh, I suppose this football club probably plays a massive part in that book, I would imagine. Yeah, of course it does. Yeah, it's, it's a massive chapter. I think that's what everyone I'm more well known about from from this club more than anything. I think uh, most people, even, unless you're from Norwich, everyone else kind of mentions oh Grant, oh yeah, he was at Norwich in the Premier League, and and that's what I'm known for. And it's great. I said it, it shows what I achieved. It shows what I've done. And, and I say I'm the first to hold my hand up and say, look, this group's been fantastic with me, and still is. Um, I said I've got opportunities now to work with the academy. Of, I'm an ambassador for the football club and uh, I try to give as much back to the football club as they give to me when I was here. And, and I suppose that era, that, that Lambert era with, with yourself, Wes Houlihan, that was such a, a bright era for the football club. Fans still talk about that now, so that, so that must be nice. And um, for you as well, that must be quite a big factor in the book because obviously it was such a special part, as you've mentioned there, in your career. Yeah, well, I think from, from being in League One to where the club was to where it is now, I don't think... It, I think we started the transition back from where they were. Uh, we took it on. I said they've had a few ups and downs in between, but predominantly since we, we came in, the club's been in a good place. So um, massive respect to everyone was impo involved in that. There was a lot of people. There wasn't just me and as the, the names you spoke about. There's a big group of people who, who took it to where it wanted to be. And it's great now. It's great where it is. The, the, to walk around the training ground now, the, I was in there uh, yesterday. It's all been handed over. The new academy buildings now have... have it's all been done uh, and everything in the background looks fantastic at the moment for this football club. And I said, the young lads we've got coming in, the, the, the way we're trying to do it now, it's fantastic. And if we can keep building from the bottom and the first team keep doing what they're doing, we'll, we'll always be in a good place. I think Russell Martin spoke earlier on this year about Wes Houlihan diving into the back of a bin lorry uh, during one of your drinking nights. Is there more stories like that in there? There's a couple in there, yeah. Um, yeah, it was a good night then, actually. Yeah. Um, I think, I, yeah, there's a few in there. There's a few in there, as I said. I didn't want to make, I, I put a few things about night out in, but I didn't want to make it all about that kind of stuff I wanted to make it more of the football side of stuff than, than actually going out drinking but I, I put a few little nuggets in there yeah. How emotional was it for you to go back through your career? Um, yeah I think I think it's not emotional you just you look back and you laugh it's not you're more looking and laughing and you're remembering little things that happen in between it and um, little stories and, and stuff that you kind of you can't put them all in yeah, you, haven't, you just haven't got long enough to put them all in and um 
you're just trying to get the ones where you think, oh yeah, that's a, that's a good one. We'll put that one in there. But no, it's, it's been great. As it's been therapeutic to me. I'm, I'm I'm glad I've done it, and I'm glad for my girls. My girls have got they were younger when I done it, so um, they'll have something to read and they'll learn little bits of like where how hard me and me and the mum worked and travelling all over the country and driving here then everywhere and, and living in different places and jumping across. I said it, it, they'll, they'll realise that how hard me me and the mum worked to, to get my career because it's not just about me. I think that's the cliche question, isn't it? Uh, particularly when when people release books, it's oh why why now to to release the book? But I think you just touched on it there. Your family was such a big part in that. Yeah, massively. I said it, it's massive for them. They're, they're, I said my my eldest had like seven different schools, so they're they're all part of the journey. Every every person has been thing. I said I touched on about my mum driving me and dad driving me all over the country, and, and my sister getting dragged there when she was younger. And anyone, every all my family is part of what my my journey was. And I said, um, I touch in the book about my brother, how much playing football with him every day helped me because he was a bloody good footballer. So um, everyone's part of it. Everyone's got their journey. Everyone's got their piece. And, and I'm very thankful. And I try and I hope the book de- shows everyone that it's not just me who's done it. It's everyone all the way down for the managers, players, people, staff, uh, and that's what it is. Is your story about resilience? Do you think because there was obviously an opportunity for you where where you could have just close the book, so to speak, and said, right, that's it, I'm done with football now, but you actually persevered and carried on. I don't think it's a book about resilience. I think it's a book of determination to keep working hard and realise what I was. I think in the end, the book becomes a, a book about freedom. A, free, a 21-year-old, I freed myself from them shackles of wanting to... I didn't care about proving anyone wrong anymore. I didn't need to. I, I, at 21, I decided to go and play football for what it was, the purity of enjoying playing football. Uh, and that's what I'd done at Barrow, and hence why I got me moved not long afterwards. I tried to make, remember, and I, I took, I still take it into now, the reason um, I walk on a football pitch, I don't do it anyway, I do it to win because I'll always be a winner, but I do it to enjoy it for what it is, it's football. Uh, I've wanted, I've done it since I was six, the ball was stuck in my foot, kicked against the wall, and that's what we've done. And I think that the freedom of when I was 21 made me enjoy my career so much better than it had ever been. Do you think that that love came from, as you say, starting from the bottom and working up? So, as you say, what you were allowed to go back and enjoy. No, I don't think that. I think it's just the love of remembering what it was when you were younger, and then that that one moment where you couldn't kick the ball on the floor, and the next moment you kicked off the floor and it went in the corner, and, and then you built from that, it went in the top corner, and then you start using your left foot, then you start doing this, then you then you do a trick in the garden that you then do in the game, and. I think that's the biggest thing. It doesn't matter what level you play at. It doesn't matter if you play Sunday morning, if you don't play football at all, if you're like kicking about in the garden, if you're in the Premier League. The reason people play football and the reason people watch it is because they love football. Just because you're not, you're not the excellence and you can't get there doesn't mean you can't enjoy football for what it is. And that's what I try to everyone, say to everyone. It doesn't matter what ability you are. If you love loving playing football, go and play football. And obviously fight me here on Sunday, you must be really looking forward to that. Yeah, it'd be great. As I said, it, it came around quick. We've, we've done everything we can to make it a great show, which I think it's going to be. I think we're up to 3,007. Hopefully we've got 28 degrees on Sunday. People can go and get the tickets from Carrow, get them bought, get them in there, fill it out. Um, I said, what a better way to be? 28 degrees, sat on car road with a beer in your hand as an adult. What, what's better than that? Um, and if and also, you can see me get beat up, which is great. Uh, what, what, what would you want? What would you want? I may not have said too much. You might have too many Ipswich fans coming along to try and watch it. So, um, But yeah, it's been great. I said, the, the back me, like to, to come here, no one knows what it is. There's probably about 2,000 in the crowd coming that never been wrestling an event before in their lives. Um, and I'm telling you, when they see it, and when you come in and when you see what it is, we've got bands coming on, we've got music, we've got foam hands, we've got you, the whole shit bang up there. When people come and they see it, I've got no doubt when they walk away, when, it, when the event gets put on again next year or whatever it is, the, them tickets will fly because when you actually come and see what some of them wrestlers do, it's phenomenal to see up close. And just finally, as you've been a player who, who's been promoted to the Premier League and had that summer between getting promoted and, and starting the Premier League. Just how long of a wait is that? Yeah, it's long. It's long. But you you try and do it the same way you've done it for the last whatever it is takes you. So you can't you try and prepare properly. I think nowadays, one of them days where you can literally finish on the whatever it is, 6th of May, and then go and get drunk for, for two months and then come back and start thinking you can run. So you never really stop now, even towards the end of career, you don't. You you have a week or two weeks off, you do a little bit in between, you build back up to it. And you've got to be an athlete now, you've got to be a specimen. You can't, you can't afford to to um, rest on your laurels because if you do, you, you'll, you'll never catch back up. So as I said, they've got, the lads go away with the programmes, they'll come back, big smile on the face, they'll kick them night balls and just love being there. Have you seen enough from this squad to um, make you confident that they can survive next year? 
I said you can't, you can't, dic- you can't predict. You can't, what, what can you say? It's like if you'd asked me this question when we, when we were there, I'd have told you all the right answers. Yes, of course we're going to do. We'll do this and we'll do that. Because of course you've got to, you've got to fight your back. But it's hard. It's not easy. It's tough. I said no, I'm hoping to do it. Of course, yeah, we all want to do. It, but everyone knows how tough it is. I think everyone knows inside, outside. I think whoever you're going to, you know what I mean. If, if it was Leeds there that have been thinking six months ago, oh, we're up. And they didn't. And the Premier League's pretty much the same thing. You, one minute you think you're safe, next minute you don't win for 10 games. You win four, and then all of a sudden you're out of it. And that's where it's tough. But one thing about this group is they've got resilience, they've got quality in there, they've got ways to hurt you, they can keep the ball well, they can move it around. Obviously, they're going to they're gonna add bodies into that into that mix, which is going to be fantastic with them. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm hoping they do it. The one thing I'll guarantee you about this squad, though, they'll, they'll fight too for nil to, to stay up. And I'm, I'm, I'm also confident enough that they'll surprise teams that when they come to Carrow, they'll, they'll get passed around. And, and that's a fantastic thing. We, we're in a great place. And we've got some great young kids coming through. We've got some wise old heads. And, and we've got a, a group of people in the in the background that no one ever hears about recruiting fantastic players at a right price.